Thank you for tuning in to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how the decimate modifier works. In order to demonstrate it, I have to talk about this model and how I have it set up. I have a different material applied to this hand. I have some seams marked along his arm. His shoulder has some edges marked sharp. His head has its normals reversed. And this hand here has a vertex group assigned to it. Let's get into object mode and apply the modifier. By default, the modifier opens up with the collapse parameter selected. The collapse parameter is very simple. The further you slide this down, the more it decimates. Decimates means that it takes the polygon count and reduces it by combining polygons that are close uh, and have similar features together. The closer you bring this to zero, the fewer polygons it has. You can add some uh, parameters to this to have a little bit more control over it. First one being triangulate. Triangulate uh, can increase the polygon count and most likely will unless you're working exclusively with triangles to begin with because it's taking these uh, quads that we have and turning them into tries. This is useful for objects that you're creating for a game engine to see where your polygon count is going to be inside of the game engine and try to reduce it. The next parameter that I want to talk about on this screen is the symmetry modify or the symmetry parameter. This takes the object and locks it symmetrical across a, a plane. And so right now, the object we're working on has no symmetry on the Z plane, nor on the X plane. So we can't select X, we can't select Z. But left to right across the Y uh, plane, we can because they're very similar. And so that locks the symmetry together. Let's, talk, let's use the vertex group now. So remember we have the vertex group assigned to this hand. With this selected, we're either going to work exclusively with this hand, or if we check this box or click this box, we're going to be working with everything but the hand. And it works just the same as if we were working it by itself. You notice that it's not collapsing in on itself entirely, and that's because we have symmetry locked. This is as much detail as this hand can lose while still maintaining a shape similar to this hand. So if we uncheck this, it will collapse in on itself entirely, and we can work on it independently. Same thing if we switch this. Now, this hand isn't going to collapse, and we have symmetry selected because it's trying too much to look like this hand. You notice that also checking symmetry, it adds some detail in the, the mesh itself, and that's because uh, when you maintain polygons here, you add polygons to the arm or you maintain some of the polygons in the arm, which results in more polygons being added to the shoulder, eventually bleeds all the way through the model, and you add uh, polygons throughout the model. This factor here is a way to work with, uh, let's say you have a model that's complex all throughout, but you have one area that you want to decimate less than others. This factor allows you to do so. So you can decimate you know, uh, part of it that much, and then you can take this factor going to decimate the rest of it at a certain threshold based on this factor. The next method that the decimate modifier works by is the unsubdivide. It's probably the simplest. You only have one option. That's the number of iterations you want to unsubdivide it by. And then as you can see, it just cuts the polygons and uh, starts merging them together. This one is very limited as to how far you can go down, though. You, after a certain point, you can't increase or decrease your polygon count. Um, it'll, it, it just can't subdivide or unsubdivide it anymore uh, because it, it has to maintain a shape. The last method that Decimate uses to uh, simplify complex models is the planar method. The planar method works with an angle limit. If you go into an object and you look at the faces that are adjacent to each other, there's uh, there's an angle that they share. Um, this angle, the, the further it is from 180 degrees, as expressed by this number, the it'll tell it whether or not it needs to merge. So at zero, it won't merge anything because everything um, is uh, at least zero degrees different from each other. But then as you increase it, it starts to go until it disappears because all the faces are merging in on each other. 
This box right here for all boundaries uh, can help out for when you have complex polygons in your model. Maybe you're not working strictly with tries and quads. And it also is another parameter that you can use to uh, collapse things a little bit smoother. So you can see here how with it selected we have a nice clean top on his edge, or top on his head. And then if we have it unselected, it starts to make it a little more jagged and our polygon count should go up a little bit. Uh, delimit is very important um, for when you have objects that you want to maintain a hard edge on, but you still want to collapse the polygon count. So we have his head with a different normal, uh, the normals flipped. So if we delimit along the normals, it will honor the edge that we created with the normals. With it unselected, or with a different thing selected, it'll, it'll do whatever it wants and it'll go past those lines. Now we have material selected. It's going to keep a hard edge between the two materials. When we have seam selected, it keeps a hard edge on the seams that we had marked, as well as when we have the sharp selected, it keeps the edges on that um, sharp. UVs go beyond the scope of this tutorial, but basically it's, it honors the islands on the UV map, um, for those of you who already know what that is. Anyway, I hope that you learned something from this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you have any ideas for something that you'd like to learn, also you feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about Blender. Thanks for watching this video.